Hello, viewers. Today we have three spine-tingling stories of alien encounters and unexplainable mysteries. In Abducted for Amusement, a family finds themselves at the mercy of otherworldly beings who view them as mere playthings. Harbinger of the Unknown follows an FBI agent's investigation in a tranquil town with sinister secrets. Lastly, Endless Enigma explores the horrifying cycle of memory and abduction. Buckle up for a journey into the unknown, and if you enjoy tales of suspense and the unexplained, remember to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Let's begin with Abducted for Amusement. Abducted for Amusement. The night was pitch black, with a heavy mist blanketing the small remote town of Pinebrook. In the heart of this secluded community, nestled among dense woods, lived a family of four, John, his wife Sarah, and their two children, Emma and Ethan. They were about to experience a terror unlike anything they had ever imagined. It started as a typical evening in Pinebrook. John and Sarah had put their kids to bed, and they settled into the living room to enjoy some quiet time together. They watched TV, chatted, and occasionally stole glances at the mesmerising starlit sky through their large bay window. As the clock neared midnight, an eerie silence fell over the house, causing John and Sarah to exchange uneasy glances. It was as if the entire world had gone still. The only sound that broke the silence was the distant howling of a lone wolf, sending shivers down their spines. Suddenly, the room was bathed in a blinding, otherworldly light. John and Sarah instinctively shielded their eyes as the room trembled beneath them. The light was so intense that it seemed to penetrate their very souls, leaving them feeling exposed and vulnerable. In an instant, the world outside the window seemed to warp and twist, as though reality itself was being torn asunder. Their television flickered and died, replaced by an overwhelming sense of dread. John and Sarah stumbled to their feet, clutching each other in terror. Before they could react, the room's walls appeared to disintegrate, revealing a nightmarish sight beyond their wildest imaginations. They found themselves on a cold metallic surface, surrounded by towering grotesque beings. These creatures were unlike anything John and Sarah had ever seen, tall and slender, with elongated limbs and featureless pallid faces. The beings paid no attention to John and Sarah's presence, instead they seemed to be focused on something else entirely. They were reveling in the sheer terror they were causing. One of the aliens turned to the others and let out a guttural, mocking laugh, pointing at John and Sarah as if they were nothing more than playthings. John and Sarah exchanged horrified glances. We need to get out of here, John whispered urgently. But how? Sarah replied, her voice trembling. They don't even see us. We're like ghosts to them. Desperation clawed at John and Sarah's hearts as they realised the hopelessness of their situation. They were mere playthings in the hands of these malevolent beings, tormented for the alien's amusement. Emma and Ethan's cries echoed through the alien chamber, and John and Sarah felt a renewed surge of terror. They had forgotten about their children in the chaos of their abduction. Frantically, they searched for their kids, finally spotting them on a cold metallic table nearby, surrounded by more of the creatures. With adrenaline pumping through their veins, John and Sarah rushed toward their children, fighting through the bizarre, alien obstacles that blocked their path. But the aliens showed no sign of aggression toward the family. They simply continued their sadistic revelry, mocking and tormenting the humans. Just as John and Sarah reached their children, the room around them began to ripple and distort once more. Reality shifted, and the family found themselves back in their living room, surrounded by the familiar warmth of their home. The eerie light, the aliens and the nightmarish chamber had all disappeared. They clutched their children tightly, trembling with fear and disbelief. The clock on the wall read 12.01am, as if no time had passed at all. Had it all been a horrifying dream? Or had they truly been abducted by otherworldly beings who saw them as nothing more than objects of amusement? The memory of that night would haunt the family of four for the rest of their lives. A chilling reminder that there are forces in the universe beyond human comprehension. The aliens had abducted them simply because they found it fun, leaving John, Sarah, Emma and Ethan with a deep and lasting terror, a grim reminder of the fragility of human existence in a vast and mysterious cosmos. Harbinger of the Unknown Agent Daniel Reed 
had seen his fair share of strange cases during his years with the FBI, but nothing could have prepared him for the enigma that unfolded in the small, quiet town of Millville. Over the past few months, reports had flooded in about the mysterious disappearances of several residents, and the locals were growing increasingly anxious. As Daniel arrived in Millville, he couldn't help but notice the palpable unease that hung in the air. The town's once friendly atmosphere had soured, replaced by fearful glances and hushed whispers. It was as if the town itself was holding its breath, waiting for answers that never seemed to come. His first stop was the local diner, where he hoped to gather some information from the townsfolk. As he sipped on a lukewarm cup of coffee, Daniel struck up a conversation with the waitress, Martha. She eyed him warily, but eventually opened up. Disappearances, you say? It's been strange, Agent Reed, she began, her voice trembling. First, it was old Frank Johnson, then the Dawson kids, and just last week, poor Rebecca Monroe. Nobody knows what's been happening. We all feel like we're being watched. Daniel furrowed his brow. Watched? By whom? Martha leaned in closer, her eyes darting around as if afraid to be overheard. Some folks say it's them aliens. You know, UFO sightings and strange lights in the sky. They've been happening for months now. Daniel couldn't hide his scepticism, but he knew better than to dismiss the locals' fears outright. He decided to visit some of the families affected by the disappearances. The grief and fear he encountered were all too real. The Johnsons were devastated by the loss of their patriarch, Frank. He was a good man, Agent Reed. Frank's widow, Helen, sobbed. One night he just vanished. There was no sign of a struggle, nothing. It's like he was plucked right out of his chair. The Dawson family shared a similar story. The parents, Mark and Lisa, had been inconsolable since their children disappeared. They had found the kids' empty beds one morning, with the window wide open and a straying eerie residue on the sill. Rebecca Monroe's family was perhaps the most affected. Her mother, Sarah, clung to Danielle, pleading for answers. Rebecca was only 16, Agent Reed. She was such a sweet girl. We can't go on like this, not knowing what happened to her. As Daniel delved deeper into the investigation, he couldn't ignore the mounting evidence that pointed to something beyond human comprehension. Witnesses described strange lights in the night sky, eerie sightings of elongated figures, and bizarre symbols etched into the ground. One evening, as he combed through the collected data, Daniel stumbled upon a disturbing pattern. The disappearances seemed to coincide with celestial events and unusual electromagnetic disturbances. He began to suspect that these were not mere abductions, but part of something far more sinister. As he pieced the puzzle together, Daniel realized that the aliens were not just randomly snatching people, they were planning something terrible, but what that something was remained a horrifying mystery. He knew he had to act swiftly, but he also understood that he might never live to see the resolution of this case. In the dead of night, Daniel staked out the area where the most recent disappearance had occurred. Armed with his flashlight and a sense of impending doom, he watched the sky. As the minutes ticked by, he saw it, a strange luminescent object hovering ominously in the darkness. The object descended slowly, casting an eerie glow over the surrounding area. Daniel's heart raced as he realized the aliens were preparing to strike again and there was little he could do to stop them. He could only hope that whatever terrible fate awaited him, it would not be as horrifying as the truth behind the aliens' sinister plans. As the alien craft drew closer, Daniel's world was enveloped in blinding light and he knew that his investigation had brought him to a point of no return. Whether he lived to tell the tale or not, the horrors he had uncovered in Millville would haunt him for the rest of his days. Endless Enigma, Serenity Valley's cycle. The town of Serenity Valley had always lived up to its name. Nestled in a picturesque valley surrounded by lush forests and rolling hills, it was a place where the residents led quiet, uneventful lives. But beneath the surface, something sinister lurked, something that would shatter the tranquility of the town forever. It all began with strange dreams and fragmented memories that haunted the residents of Serenity Valley. People would wake up in a cold sweat, unable to recall the details of their nocturnal terrors. They'd see fleeting glimpses of shadowy figures and hear whispers in a language they couldn't understand. Jane Wilson, a schoolteacher in her mid-thirties, 
was among the first to notice something was amiss, night after night. She would dream of being in a sterile metallic room with bright lights, surrounded by tall, alien beings with featureless faces. They would examine her, prod her with strange instruments and speak in hushed tones. As the days passed, Jane couldn't shake the feeling that the dreams were more than mere nightmares. She began to investigate, secretly collecting stories from her friends and neighbours who had experienced similar unsettling dreams. The more she delved into their accounts, the clearer the pattern became. People across Serenity Valley were sharing eerily similar experiences. Some recalled strange marks on their bodies, like puncture wounds or unexplained scars. Others reported missing time, with hours unaccounted for in their memories. Jane shared her findings with Mark Harrison, the town's sheriff, and together they embarked on a quest to uncover the truth behind the strange occurrences. They interviewed dozens of residents, created a timeline of events, and contacted experts in psychology and ufology. Their investigation led them to a chilling revelation. Serenity Valley had been the site of covert alien abductions for years, and the residents had been subjected to a memory-wiping process. The aliens had wiped their memories and placed them in a simulated reality, a facade of normalcy designed to keep the town oblivious to their nefarious experiments. Jane and Mark knew that confronting the aliens was their only chance at breaking free from this sinister cycle. They gathered a group of trusted friends and neighbours who had experienced the same dreams and memories. Together, they formulated a plan to expose the aliens and demand answers. Under the cover of darkness, they infiltrated the area where they believed the abductions took place. As they entered a secluded clearing in the woods, they were met with an eerie sight, the same metallic room from their nightmares standing before them in the moonlight. The aliens, tall and slender, with featureless faces, emerged from the shadows. Their presence sent a shiver down Jane's spine, but she steeled herself for what lay ahead. We know what you've been doing, Jane said, her voice quivering with determination. You can't hide it any longer. One of the aliens stepped forward, its eyes devoid of emotion. You were never meant to remember, it hissed in a cold, metallic voice. But the residents of Serenity Valley were not deterred. They demanded answers, refusing to be pawns in the aliens' game any longer. The confrontation escalated, and it became clear that the aliens were losing control of the situation. In a desperate move, one of the aliens activated a device, bathing the room in blinding light. The residents shielded their eyes, and when the brilliance finally faded, they found themselves back in their beds, as if nothing had happened. The memory of their confrontation began to fade, just like all the other memories that had haunted them. Jane and Mark exchanged confused glances, realising that the aliens had wiped their memories once again. It was as if the entire ordeal had never occurred. Weeks passed, and life in Serenity Valley returned to its normal, uneventful routine. The residents went about their daily lives, completely unaware of the truth that had eluded them. But as the dreams and fragmented memories began to resurface, Jane, Mark and a few others felt a growing unease. They couldn't shake the feeling that they had been through this before, that they had confronted the aliens and been made to forget. The cycle was repeating itself, and the aliens had hinted that this was not the first time the town had discovered their secret. As the memories grew clearer, Jane and Mark realised the horrifying truth. They were trapped in a never-ending cycle of abductions and memory wipes, condemned to relive the same nightmare over and over again. The aliens' sinister experiment continued, and the residents of Serenity Valley were powerless to escape their torment, forever destined to confront the truth and have it erased like clockwork. Thanks for watching. To support us, please like and subscribe.